transport across membranes. Dear children, myself, Dr. Dignavarkis, biological molecules containing metal ions. First one is the transport of ions through membranes. Second one is the transfer of electrons. Third one is the transcription of genes. In this video class, we turn to discuss the role of metal ions through membranes. Appreciate the role of the elements in the structure and function of organism. We need to know a little about the organization of the atom of biology, that is the cell and its fundamental particles, the cell's constituent organelles. We know the cell has is the basic unit of any living organism, ranging complexity from the simplest types, found in prokaryotes, and much larger and more complex examples found in the eukaryotes. The main feature of these cells are illustrated in the generic model shown in this figure. This is a layout of a general eukaryotic cell showing the cell membrane and also the various kinds of compartments or organelles. It contains a nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, peroxisome, chloroplast, cytoplasm, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus and there is one more thing that is the membrane bound ionic pump and ionic channels that control the flow of ions between the compartments. Okay. Biological membranes. Biologic membranes are highly selective permeable barriers that surround distinct cellular compartments. Biological membranes consist of a double sheet of a bilayer of lipid molecules that is known as phospholipid bilayer. Three types of lipids are found in biological membranes namely phospholipid, glycolipids and sterols. They control the flow of messages between the cells and sending by sending, receiving and processing information in the form of chemical and electrical signal. Stroke membrane is generally referred to as phospholipid bilayer that we see already and here the interior of the lipid bilayer is shown here. The interior of the lipid bilayer is a hydrophobic region. So, it is essentially impermeable to polar, hydrophilic and large biologic molecules. Here you can see a hydrophobic molecule such as benzene that is permeable. Very small neutral molecules such as gas molecules, oxygen, carbon dioxide that also permeable. And the polar molecules such as water which is totally or partially permeable or impermeable. Other polar organic molecules, sugar molecules that are impermeable, ions, all the inorganic ions such as hydrogen ion, sodium ion, potassium ion, chloride that is also impermeable and the proteins and other large molecules that are also impermeable. We know that the membrane spanning proteins facilitate or catalyze such impermeable molecules from one compartment to other compartment. Three principles of membrane transport. First one is the permeability of the molecule in a lipid bilayer. Second one is the availability of an energy source. Here you can see a table that representing the relative permeability of a phospholipid bilayer to various substances. For example, the type of substances, gases. Examples are carbon dioxide, nitrogen, oxygen gases, which is permeable. Type of substances, small uncharged polar molecules. Examples, urea, water, ethanol. Behavior type, permeable and totally or Partially. Large uncharged polar molecules such as glucose, fructose, that is not permeable. Ions. 
potassium sodium chloride bicarbonate that is also not permeable charged polar molecules atp amino acids glucose 6 phosphate that is also not permeable How do inorganic ions and charged and water soluble molecules move into and out of the cells and across cell intracellular membranes in a selective manner? That is possible by the membrane transport proteins. Cells use membrane transport proteins to maintain intracellular ion concentrations that are much different from the extracellular concentrations. Here you can see a figure which shows iron gradients in, across the plasma membrane of mammalian skeletal muscle cells the relative atomic radius of the non hydrated ions are indicated by differently colored and sized symbols okay here you can see the extracellular concentration of sodium potassium calcium and chloride here you can see the intracellular concentration of the sodium potassium calcium and chloride ion in the case of sodium the extracellular concentration is high when compared to intracellular concentration for potassium it is in the reverse order it shows potassium ion extracellular concentration is lower when compared to intracellular concentration the net effect of these concentration differences is that for resting animal cells inside of the cell is charged slightly negative relative to the outside these concentration and charge differences together create electrochemical gradients which are used by cells as a store of potential energy for the secondary processes Regulation of electrochemical gradients across cell membrane allows a large number of basic cellular functions such as energy production and processing of electrical signals in and out of the cells that we have already discussed in the case of sodium potassium pump Some transport proteins are present in the plasma membrane whereas others are present in the membranes of intracellular organelle to maintain the composition of the cell and its intracellular compartments it is important that transport proteins are selective for a particular solute species over others membrane transport proteins can be classified into two groups that is channels and carriers depending on the mode of transport so the channels and carriers are the main types of membrane transport proteins Ion channels catalyzes the rapid and selective transport of ions down their electrochemical gradients. Transporters and pumps are carrier proteins which use the energy of electrochemical gradients to couple the transport of other solutes against their electrochemical gradient. You can see a figure that shows the channels and carrier proteins which are the two basic types of membrane transport proteins solute diffuses near their maximal diffusion rate through the pore channel proteins whereas the carrier proteins bind solutes no one side of the membrane undergo a conformational change and release it on the other side at the significantly slower rate channels composed of one or more alpha subunits contain a more poor region through which the solutes pass at high flux rates when the channel is open in contrast carrier proteins bind solutes on one side of the membrane and undergo an allosteric that is conformational change and release the solutes on the other side of the membrane 
going to discuss the channels. We know the channels are proteins in membranes. They allow the passage of solutes based mainly on size. Examples for channels is one is porin which are present in some prokaryotes and mitochondria gap junctions. Another important one is the nuclear pore complexes which is a more selective channel. Iron channels catalyze the highly selective movement of small solutes like ions. Aquaporins catalyze the highly selective movement of water molecules across membrane. Characteristics of channel proteins High solute selectivity, rapid rate of solute permeation, gating mechanisms that rapidly regulate the solute formation. The inner part of the channel protein through which the solutes pass from one side of a membrane to the other is called the channel pore. The channel proteins contains channel pore through which the solute molecules pass from one side of the membrane to the other. These are of two types. Some channels consist of a single protein whose transmembrane segments form a pore. Others exist as oligomers of identical or different alpha subunits that together form a pore. Most channel proteins are highly selective for a particular solute species such as sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride or water. The electrochemical gradient of the solute dictates the direction of net ionic flux through this channel. The channel proteins have fast conduction rates for ion channels. The measured rates are up to 10 raised to 8 per second which is close to the maximal rate of diffusion of ions in water. Other membrane proteins are carrier proteins. Carrier proteins are divided into two types, pumps and transporters. Transporters couple the energy stored in electrochemical membrane gradients to facilitate the movement of substrates across cell membranes. Pumps use energy such as the energy released by ATP hydrolysis directly to drive energetically less favorable substrate accumulation or cellular efflux pathway. Compared with channel proteins, carrier proteins have much slower rate of transport on the order of 1000 solute molecules per second. Transport is again divided into three types, uniporters, symporters, antiporters. Uniporters, symporters and antiporters are proteins that are used in transport of substances across a cell membrane. Uniporters are involved in facilitated diffusion and work by binding to one molecule of substrate at a time to move it along its concentration gradient. Symporters and antiporters are involved in active transport. Antiporters transport molecules in opposite directions while symporters transport molecules in the same direction. Mechanism of transport types here you can see the mechanism of transport types that is first one is the passive transport and the second one is active transport. Passive transport means down electrochemical gradient that is that means no energy required for such transport. Active transport type means it is against an electrochemical gradient so it needs energy. Passive transport type, a diffusion occurs and for the active transport system, mechanic, sorry, membrane pumps or ATPases. 
passive transport types the facilitated diffusion the types diffusion facilitated diffusion diffusion here the endocytosis here the solvent drag secondary to trans epithelial transport so the mechanisms of solute transport across membranes can be categorized into passive or active active transport in cellular biology the active transport is the movement of molecules across a cell membrane from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration against the concentration gradient active transport requires cellular energy to achieve this movement there are two types of active transport primary active transport that uses adenosine triphosphate and the secondary active transport that uses an electrochemical gradient passive transport the alternative to active transport is passive transport which uses kinetic energy only to move the molecules passive transport can only move molecules from a region of higher concentration to a lower concentration whereas active transport moves molecules from an area of lower concentration to higher concentration so there needs energy but in the case of passive transport only use kinetic energy active transport involves molecules moving against a gradient or other form of resistance such such as from an area of lower to a primary active transport the action of the sodium potassium pump is an example of primary active transport primary active transport is also called direct active transport which directly uses the metabolic energy to transport the molecules across membrane substances that are transported across the cell membrane by primary active transport include metal ions such as sodium potassium magnesium and calcium ion most primary active stress transport is carried out by the transmembrane atpase an enzyme that crosses the cell membrane that enzyme already discussed in the case of sodium potassium pump this enzyme maintains the cell membrane potential by pumping three sodium ions out of the cell for every two potassium ions it moves into the cell secondary active transport secondary active transport or coupled transport is not coupled to atp electrochemical potential is built up by pumping ions into or out of the cell this potential can provide energy for metabolism for example sodium ions are transported across the plasma membrane and the electrochemical gradient powers active transport of another ion or molecule hydrogen pumps build up an electrochemical gradient of h plus ions in cells to power cellular respiration thank you for your attention